This theoretical experiment sounded ridiculous, and so far out from common sense and logical thinking, which resulted in quantum theory being logically proved wrong. However, in the 1980s, things changed dramatically, when this entanglement was in fact proved to be a real phenomenon, when experiments showed that two particles are non-locally connected. As a result of this, it is extremely unlikely that the quantum mechanics would be completely overturned or proved wrong. It could of course happen, however, that the principle of non-locality will have to remain and serve as the core for the new theory. The already mentioned theory of relativity as described by Albert Einstein merged both time and space into a single concept of space-time and defined the speed of light as the ultimate speed limit. According to Newton's laws, the planets should stop following their orbits if the sun suddenly disappeared. However, as Einstein believed that nothing can travel faster than the speed of light, not even gravity, then these planets could not leave their orbits before the gravitational waves would reach them. Einstein's equations can describe what is happening in the macrocosm, whereas quantum mechanics describes well what is going on in the subatomic world. Many scientists are trying to define a new theory that would finally encompass all of the events, both in the microcosm and macrocosm. One of the most prominent is string theory, or its variations such as M-theory. In this theory a particle is seen as a kind of vibrating string of energy, and all the matter is therefore seen as a symphony of vibrations. String theory predicts more than 11 dimensions and was mathematically proved right. However, due to our inability to make measurements at such tiny microscopic scales, this theory was said to be permanently safe as it cannot be disproved. And to put it simply, no theory so far is completely wrong. Each of these is describing a fraction of the whole reality. Newton was proved wrong by Einstein when he predicted in his theory that objects approaching the speed of light start to shrink, which was something against Newton's view. On the other hand, Einstein was proved wrong by quantum mechanics, when in fact it was discovered that the reality is non-local and the entanglement does indeed exist. I'm not trying to say that quantum mechanics or the M-theory are the final solutions, nor that the work of Newton or Einstein was wrong or not important. All I'm saying is that we are approaching a new paradigmic shift, a shift where our mind, consciousness and the act of observation affects the reality around us, without a doubt. So what could be the next step? Are there any theories that could potentially bridge both micro and macrocosm, both objective and subjective experiences? At the end of this talk, I will focus on a holographic model of this reality which seems to get on very well with the latest discoveries and has the potential for describing what is going on at every level of our existence. So this is Newton's machine-like predictable world that can no longer be a good model for describing this reality. Now there comes a very different world, a kind of mysterious world that doesn't look solid at all and in addition it responds to our consciousness. Albert Einstein could not really accept the implications of quantum mechanics and once said, the more success the quantum mechanics has, the sillier it looks. 
Albert lived the last years of his life isolated in his house, trying to come up with a theory of everything. And during the last years of his life, he admitted that anyone who becomes seriously involved in the pursuit of science becomes convinced that the spirit is manifest in the laws of the universe, a spirit vastly superior to that of man. The father of quantum mechanics, Max Planck, said this after researching the subatomic world of matter. All matter originates and exists only by virtue of a force. We must assume behind this force the existence of a conscious and intelligent mind. This mind is the matrix of all matter. And I think we should really give some credit and significance to his lifetime's conclusions that the mind is the matrix of all matter. The next one is the already mentioned holographic model on which I'm going to focus towards the end of this presentation. Morphogenetic fields by Rupert Sheldrake and the lifetime's work of Stanislav Grof and Erwin Laszlo showing the evidence for Akashic field. A field that contains information about everything that has ever happened. Is this something similar or even the same thing that Carl Jung was describing as a collective unconsciousness? From where his patients could obtain such information they would not normally have access to. Erin Laszlo once said, the subtle energies and information that underlie the universe were there before its particles of matter appeared and will be there after these particles disappear. David Bohm, one of the most respected quantum mechanics, a good friend of Jiddu Krishnamurti, with whom he recorded great dialogues on the nature of reality, which are available on YouTube, and I would really recommend this to everyone who is seriously interested in understanding this existence. Let's have a look at the interesting things happening in the world of quantum mechanics. I'm going to show you in a minute that atoms are non-locally connected, that are influenced by the act of conscious observation, and we cannot measure both their position and momentum at the same time. This is known as Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Quarks are appearing and disappearing from existence, and atoms behave both like waves and particles. An act of conscious observation collapses the wave function. For a long time we have thought of atoms as solid particles, but one experiment, called the double slit experiment, has changed our view on this forever. The experiment shows that atoms behave both like waves and particles, depending on the observer. To briefly describe this experiment, let's have a look at the following video. If atoms were solid particles, they should leave a single line pattern like this when fired through one slit. And a double line pattern when fired through two slits. The interesting thing about this is that when we fire atoms through two slits without observing them, they would form an interference pattern like this, which is typical for waves. And however, when we decide to look at them to see through which slit an electron goes, then this causes an electron to behave like a solid particle. In other words, an electron goes only through one slit and not through both of them, which was the case when no one was observing it. The act of observing is said to be collapsing the wave function. So, how can something immaterial as consciousness have any effect on our physical reality? This... This isn't real. What is real? How do you define real? If you're talking about what you can feel, what you can smell, what you can taste and see, then real is simply electrical signals interpreted by your brain. Let's move on, on to the actual experiments that I have selected for this particular presentation. There are so many of these experiments out there. However, I have only chosen 10, which I thought were the most significant ones. Instant communication between atoms, quantum information teleportation, emotions affect DNA on distance, and all of these are proper scientific studies that can be repeated many times and we would get pretty much the same results every time we repeated them. All of these experiments are described in publications that you can access from the internet.